Hello, First Baptist Bracktown family and friends. Delighted to be with you on another Sunday morning. Pray that you are well, that you're staying home, staying healthy, still wearing your mask when you go out and watching your social distancing, okay? We want to stay safe, do everything that we can to protect ourselves and others. I want to say a special word of congratulation to all of our graduates, high school and college grads. We are so proud of you. Only two things you get in life that no one can take from you. One is salvation, the other is education. So we pray that you'll continue to seek that higher education, but never forget the value of your salvation. Stay connected to God, stay connected to church. We're awfully proud of you. Keep climbing, all right? Now I have to address social issues that are going on in this country. Uh, we're seeing lives that are not valued, lives of color. And listen, I want us to be a part of the solution, not the problem. We're going to protest, protest. We need to do it uh, in a safe manner, okay? Please don't be a part of burning someone's property, destroying someone's property. Please comply with everything that the police tell you to do. Even if they're wrong, you comply and live. We'll take care of it later, okay? We want you to be safe. Listen, being black is not a crime. You be proud of who you are. I'm proud of you, and I'm never ashamed of what God made me to be. Let's go worship now. Let's lift him up on this Sunday morning. CJ and the praise team gonna kick it off for us. Love you, see you in a minute. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's time to give God all the glory, honor, and praise. We come to worship our King. Come on, everybody, put your hands together right where you are, in your living room, in your kitchen. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus as we're led in worship today by Minister Ryan Ferris. Come on, y'all. Thy name, come thou almighty, almighty help us thy name. We come to pray, we come to pray, we come to pray. Help us thy name. Come thou almighty, come thou almighty king. Help us thy name, come thou almighty, come thou almighty king. Help us thy name, come thou almighty, come thou almighty king. Help us thy name, we come to pray, we come to pray. We come to praise, to praise thy name. Father of glorious, for all we go. Come and reign. Come and reign. Father of glorious, for all we go. Come and reign. Come and reign. We come to praise. We come to praise. We come to praise.
I make it all these years how did I make it this far through the valleys and over the hills I know it had to be God mm -hmm. how did I make it through the storm how did I make it through the rain? If you want to know just how I got here, it's so easy to explain. It was God's grace. God's grace. 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 I made it this far. It was God's grace. God's grace. It was God's grace. God's grace. His amazing grace. God's grace. Oh, I made it this far. I made it this far. By the grace of God. Oh, Lord, I thank you for how you brought me. How you brought me through the night. Lord, you kept me and you never left me. You stood by my side. There were so many times, Lord, I came so close. Hey, old man death tried to take me in. But the reason I, but the reason I'm here it's not hard for me to see. In fact, it's so easy for me to explain. Oh, God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. God's grace. His amazing grace. God's grace. Yes, I made it this far. I made it this far. By the grace. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. His amazing grace. I made it this far. By the grace of God. I remember the times when I strayed away, even though I knew your word. Still I, wouldn't obey. I wouldn't obey, but God's mercy and his grace, it stayed with me, yeah. brought me, yes, it brought me all the way, oh, God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, his amazing grace, I made it this far. Of God. 
I remember the time when I strayed away. Even though I knew your word, still I wouldn't obey. But God's mercy and his grace, it stayed with me. It brought me, yes, it brought me all the way. Whoa. His grace, grace, His amazing grace. grace. Yeah, I made it this far made it by the grace of God. It was God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, His amazing grace.
grateful for his grace. Come on, that's a good place to praise him. I know we got to move on. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. Somebody, anybody, want to give him a praise. Come on, put those hands together, everybody. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Something about that name. Something about that name. Something about that name. Something about that name. your feet on the floor. Put the devil between your hands and let him know he can't have your mind. Let him know he can't have your family. Let him know he can't have your body. Come on, let's receive our pastor at this time. to church and a fire broke out. Thank God for his grace. Amen. We are saved by grace plus nothing. His grace alone is sufficient to save our souls. Thank God for the music ministry. So grateful for the praise team and men of music for CJ and for all of those that make this production possible. Guys upstairs, Benji and Shalom, we appreciate you and certainly Sherelle. It's offering time now. It's time when we give back to God out of the abundant substance that he has given unto us. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. We pray that you will prepare your offering even now. We are grateful to God for the privilege of giving. God's way of financing his church is through tithes and offering. We pray that you'll get on Secure Give, get on Cash App right now and that you will give even as you have received in an abundant fashion. Amen. God didn't give what he could spare. He gave the very best that he had. Let's give our best back to him. Amen. Come on, let's pray together right now. God, how grateful we are 
that you are a loving God and a giving God. You loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son. And God, we come to you now, not with leftovers, but with first fruits. Off the top, God, with faith, we bring back to you that which you have commanded. And we pray that you would search our hearts and that you would find us to be cheerful givers. Take what we bring to you, shake it together, press it down, multiply it till it's running over. Give it back to us according to your holy will. Bless all who shall give and all who desire to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. It's preaching time. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me direct our attention today to the gospel according to Mark chapter 5. I want to read a rather lengthy passage today, but I'm not taking for granted that everybody knows the Bible stories. So I want to read this story in its entirety, beginning at verse 21. It is a familiar text, and I hear you, David Cozart. If I'm going to present to you something familiar, then tell me something I don't know. So, Mark 5, beginning at verse 21. This is what it says in the New International Version. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because, she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? See the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. I want to lift my text from verse uh, 26. Verse 26, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. I want to talk about depleted but still delivered. Depleted but still delivered. You're going to pray with me today, aren't you? One of the most insightful and challenging books I have ever read 
is entitled The Decline of African American Theology from Biblical Faith to Cultural Accommodation. It is written by the African scholar Tabiti M. and Yabwili. In the book, the author suggests that theology in the modern day black church has become so diluted that we no longer really know what we believe. This author concludes that most of our black churches major in emotionalism, abdicating the responsibility to worship on a high intellectual plane. He says what we do in church leans heavily in the way of feeling and not so much in the area of thinking. As a result, we leave church feeling good, but with a little knowledge of what we heard and learned. We walk out with a feeling, but not much thinking. God wants a response to his word that is replete with thought, not just feeling. I have nothing against emotions. I know emotions are not volitional, but I do believe emotionalism should not be the driving factor in our worship. I would not serve a God I could not feel sometime. But I am also cognizant of God's word repeatedly saying, and we know. It says, I would not have you to be ignorant. His word says, study to show yourself approved. These and so many other passages deal not with our feelings, but with our ability to think and process. Are you with me? At the height of our celebration, I do not believe God wants us to be driven by the syncopation of a Hammond B3 organ. God wants our feelings to be driven by our thinking so our hands, feet, and mouth will be motivated by what is in our head and our heart. Our foreparents knew little or nothing about theology, but they often said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Amen? I really believe we can change our life when we change how we think. Can I show it to you? Come on to the text. Mark introduces us to a nameless but not fameless woman who has a gynecological condition that has caused her to bleed constantly for 12 years. Let, let me note a couple of things about that. First of all, the, the woman is bleeding in a private place so that if you did not know she had a problem, you would not know she had a problem. You see, this woman had a problem she could cover up. Mm -mm. She was able to hide her condition. And unless she told you, there was no way to know what she was going through. Now, it's one thing when you can pop some mints or spray some perfume or put on some makeup to hide the dark circles under your eyes or wear long sleeves even in 90-degree weather so folk can't see the marks on your arms. Some problems you can have and others don't have to know. In fact, you may be sitting beside somebody right now, even in your home, who is bleeding, maybe not physically, but emotionally or psychologically, they are privately bleeding. Some folk are jealous of you and talk about you because on the surface, you seem to have it all together, but they just don't know that as good as you look on the outside, you are bleeding in a private place. Have I got a witness? This, this, this woman's private problem is having a public impact on her life. Because of her problem, she is considered unclean. She can't touch anybody. She's really not supposed to leave the house. Anything she sits on is supposed to be burned so it won't contaminate anybody else. Now, please remember, 
that in the Bible, blood represents life. So for 12 years, her condition has been depleting her very life. But I like this woman because in spite of the fact that she's been losing life, she has not given up on life. Her finances have been depleted as she's gone from one doctor to another. No doubt her strength has waned because of the constant blood loss. Yet, in spite of being depleted on multiple fronts, this woman still gets delivered. How did it happen? She didn't get delivered because she threw some money on the altar while the preacher was preaching. She did not speak in tongues. She did not run around in a circle seven times. Her, her deliverance started when her thinking changed. If you don't think right, you can sow seeds and speak in tongues and read your Bible day and night, but without changing how you think, you'll never experience deliverance. She, she used to think that going to doctors would get her some relief, but verse 28 says she had a different thought. With all she's been through that should have wiped her out, she lost money, lost friends, where's her family? She lost social standing, yet the one thing she has not lost is her mind. Even though her body was falling apart, her mind was still working well. Listen, I, I don't care what you are going through, how long your night or how dark your day, if you still have the capacity to think right, then the devil has not yet won. As long as you can think, you can still uh, get delivered. Regardless to what other folk are saying about you acting a little strange, you can still uh, get deliverance if you've still uh, got your mind. I ought to have a witness right here. Because after all some of you have been through, you should have been crazy as a Betsy bug a long time ago, but you still got your mind. You should be depressed. You ought to be on antidepressant. You should be in a straight jacket after all of the things uh, that have gone wrong in your life. How is it possible uh, that you still have uh, your right mind? You ought to be rocking back and forth like Miss Seely. No visible twitch. You're not banging your head against the wall why have you not lost your mind help me tell somebody if I can think I can get through it if I can think I can be delivered if I can think God uh, has a way out just for me why don't you throw your head back and thank God that you still got your mind. Tell them, I may be broke, but I still got my mind. I, I may have lost my job, but I still got my mind. My, my health is failing, but I, I still got my mind. Family seems to be going crazy, but I've still uh, got my mind. How do I know I still got it? Because I woke up this morning with my mind uh, staying on Jesus. Walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. That, 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 that's why you shout like you shout, and, and that's why I rock like I rock, because with everything else we have lost, we've still got our mind. Have I got a witness? Well, three things we can learn from this woman. First of all, the content of your conversation must rise to the level of your expectation. <laughs> yeah, come on, come here. Uh, we think, and then we believe what we think. Watch, watch this. Do not allow what you are going through to be the topic of your conversation. Too often our language will contradict what we're going through. This woman is bleeding but she's talking and she's not talking about her bleeding you missed it and instead of talking about her bleeding she's talking about her healing our problem is we spend too much time talking about our bleeding and not enough time talking about our healing help me somebody <laughs> 
Folk hate to see some of us coming because as soon as we open our mouth, blood starts coming out. All we want to talk about is our problems. Who won't help us? Who won't speak up for us? Who won't give us a job? Who is a racist? Who, what is not right in our life? All we talk about is our problems. Uh, nobody wants to be around a negative person all the time. Change what's coming out of your mouth and you can change the people uh, in your life. Stop focusing on what you're going through and put your eyes of faith uh, on what God can do in your life. People will look at you crazy. They'll think you've lost it, but go on and speak those things that are not as though they were, and they will come true. Raise your expectations. Declare, I expect to be del delivered. I expect to be set free. I expect to get a good woman. I expect God to give me a good man. I expect my children uh, to be productive. I expect my life to get better. Speak that. Why must you speak it? It's in the text. This woman has gone to doctors, which means she's heard other folk talk about her condition. But the fact that she hasn't lost hope indicates that she hasn't yet let other folks dismal diagnoses become the determining factor for her destiny. Doctors have talked and said they could not help her. People have talked and declared her worthless. But she has not allowed the negativity of others to infiltrate her own private conversations. That's why we must have our own relational opinions about Jesus so we don't have to rely on the opinions of other folk. It does not matter what anyone else says, what others may conclude. You've got to open up your own mind and declare that God uh, will make a way somehow. You've got to state that with your mouth. Have I got a witness? But I see something else here in the text. Here it is. What you profess is more important than what you possess. Hmm? Okay. Listen. Depleted finances did not deplete her faith. The text says she's broke. She has no personal resource. Help me to preach Holy Ghost. Yet she's talking faith without finances. Let, let, let me plant, her, plant my feet right here. Her faith is not tied to her money. Her faith is not tied to creature comforts. Pimping preachers who present a candy-coated gospel that say if you've got faith, then you ought to have a big house and a fine car. Well, the devil is a lie. This woman has no money, but she's got lots of faith. Mama taught me that faith will take you where money won't. If you have faith, you don't need to have money because you know the miracle worker. Stop believing everybody on TV who says, sow a seed in their ministry and watch money come into your hand. Shake some young person right close to you and tell them, baby, money comes when you work. Look at the text. <laughs> this woman is out of resources, but not out of options. God gives her a vision without giving her money. Listen, some pastors need to hear this because you won't start your building plan until you raise the money to pay for it. Or you invite some folk in and agree to give them one third of whatever they raise off of your people. Listen, I, I know for a fact that God will put a plan in your head and heart before he puts any money in your bank. And what I have learned over my 40 years of pastoring in four building projects is if it's God's will, it's God's bill. If it's God's choice, it's God's invoice. And God will be debtor to no man. He'll always pay his bill. Have I got a witness? Looky here. Instead of asking God for money, why don't you ask him for a miracle? 
I dare you to ask God to give you a miracle. Work out the supernatural. Maybe you've always had all the money you needed, but that's not my story. I've had some money moments that made me miserable, uh, but God stepped in and gave me a miracle. Am I by myself? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, nowhere, you, somewhere in your situation, you had uh, to have some money and the money never showed up, but you didn't have to drop out of school. You didn't lose your house. Your car was not repoed. How did it happen when the money you thought you had to have never came? The money didn't come, but a miracle did. Now folk are trying to figure out how you live like you do, give like you do. Always don't donate in something to somebody else. Tell them, I do what I do, not because I've got a fat bank account, but because I serve a miracle working God. I know I'm right. Some of us have not only seen a miracle, but we are a miracle. Born in the projects, raised in a one-parent home, lived in poverty, ethnicity, and obscurity. But look at me now. I don't look like what I came out of, and I don't look like what I've been through. Trust the master, not your money. I'm almost done. Here's the third thing. God will use what you say to help somebody else with their struggle. Please understand that this miracle <laughs> is not really about this woman. It's really about Jairus. It, it really is. The woman is an interruption in Jesus' path. This story is about Jairus, the synagogue ruler. You remember he came to Jesus begging him to come up to his house and heal his sick daughter who is dying. Jesus agrees to go with him. But on the way to the house, this woman with her gynecological condition sneaks up behind Jesus and gets a miracle. Jesus stops and says, who touched me? The disciples say, Master, all of these folk crowding around you constantly bumping into you and you ask who touched you? Jesus said, no, boys, there's a difference between a bump and a touch. <laughs> a, a lot of folk are bumping into me, he says, but they're not getting anything from me. But somebody touched me and that person got something from me. Uh-oh. Maybe the reason some folk can come to church, hear songs of Zion and the word of God preached and leave just as mean and nasty and unconcerned as they were when they came in is because all they do is bump into Jesus. They never really touch him. This, this woman, this woman seems to get scared. She knows it was her. Come on, I need you to come real close right here. Because the text says in verse 29, the bleeding stopped and she felt in her body. Remember, she's bleeding in a private place, but she's out in the public, which means she can't look to see if the bleeding is stopped. So she had to go on a feeling. Listen, every now and then you can't wait till you see it. You just have to go with what you feel. So sometimes when you pray, you can't wait till God answers. You've got to get up off of your knees and declare, I feel like. It's already done. The choir down the street used to sing, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Some, somebody not, 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 not yet mature in faith would ask, how do you know? And some old saint would holler back, the Holy Ghost done told me that everything is going to 
Is there anybody out there that can say, I feel like things are getting better. I, I feel like my breakthrough is coming. I feel like my promotion is on the way. I feel like my child uh, is finally going to turn around. I feel like my life is on the uptick. Sometimes uh, when you can't see it, you just got to feel it. Ain't God all right? Well, come on and help me close here. Here in detail what this woman said. Mark says at the end of verse 33, she told Jesus the whole truth. <laughs> she went back 12 years to when she first got sick. Talked about all the doctors she had visited all the medicines she had taken, how her situation continued to get worse instead of better. She's given a detailed account of all she's been through the last 12 years. Now, if I had been J. Iris and had just told Jesus that my daughter was about to die, it's one thing for you to heal this woman but why are you now wasting more time listening to her testimony when she already got what I still need? Don't be too hard on me right here. It ain't in the text. But can I peek between the lines and tell you what I believe? I don't believe Jesus stopped so he could tell, that she could tell her testimony. I believe Jesus stopped so Jairus could hear her testimony. Ain't God all right? After all, Jairus was not a follower of Jesus. He was a ruler in the synagogue. He doesn't really have faith in Jesus. He goes to Jesus because all else has failed. So before Jesus can perform the miracle, he has to activate Jairus's faith. Have I got a witness? Jesus needed Jairus to hear the testimony of a woman who had been sick as long as his daughter had been in the world. His daughter was 12. The woman been bleeding for 12 years. Jesus needed Jairus to see if I did it for her, I can do it for you. Won't he do it? Well, good evening now, but that's why I keep telling my story. Because what God did for me, he'll do the same thing for you. God took me out of the hills of Tennessee. Brought me up in a single parent home. After high school, I was too poor to go to college. So God put me in the Air Force. I went in struggling with English and came out four years later speaking five languages. Took me out of Paducah where I was a big fish in a small pond and brought me to Lexington where I'm a small fish in a big pond. Put me in a wonderful church. Don't be fooled. What you see now is not what I found 38 years ago. We've never had lots of money, but we've watched God work one miracle after another. Finances were depleted, but we still got delivered. And I've got to tell it because some Jairus needs to hear it. What's your story? If God has ever paid your bills, you ought to tell it. As if he's ever healed your body, you ought to tell it. If he helped you raise your children, you ought to tell it. If he gave you strength to take, take you off your sick bed and take care of your loved ones, you ought to tell it. If he healed your broken marriage, you ought to tell somebody, he did it for me. I've got to tell my whole story of what God did for me. <clears throat> Here's the last thing. This woman had to tell her whole story because her problem was private, but her praise needed to be public. Somebody listening to me has fought some private battles. You've had a struggle, uh, struggles that you couldn't hide from anybody but yourself. But today is your day to give God public praise for helping you fight your private battles. I'm talking about nights when you couldn't sleep and days when you couldn't get out of bed 
You remember when you had to take a pill to get up in the morning and another pill to go to sleep at night? You couldn't tell nobody. You had to keep it to yourself. But this is your day to let the world know that we've had some private problems, some personal propensities, uh, some secret sins. Uh, but God let us get to this point in life uh, where we'll give him some public praise. I need to tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. He thought I was worth saving, so he changed my life. Uh, thought I was worth keeping, uh, so he cleaned me up inside. Uh, thought I was worth dying for, so he sacrificed his life uh, so I could be free, so I could be whole, uh, so I can tell everybody I know that's why Jesus died on Calvary. Uh, that's why he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Uh, that's why early on the third morning uh, he got up from the grave. Uh, he's been too good to me. Uh, I can't keep it to myself. Uh, I've got to tell somebody uh, how he dried tears from my eyes, uh, how he healed my broken heart, uh, how he soothed my wounded spirit, uh, how he makes a way out of no way. Uh, is there anybody out there just want to wave your hand? If I couldn't say a word, I just, I got to tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. Is there one witness that know you were depleted? but you still got delivered. Uh, is there one somebody uh, that had a private problem, uh, but you give God public praise? Uh, you ought to throw your head back uh, and say thank you, thank you, thank you for all you've done. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, is there anybody here uh, know he's all right? Uh, won't he make a way? Won't he open the door? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Been depleted, but I still got delivered. Amen. Been bleeding in some private places, but I came today to give God some public praise. I've had troubles that nobody knew about but me and God. But I want to tell the world today that he is yet a deliverer. Have I got a witness out there? You haven't always been where you are. You haven't always had what you have. And you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, God knows where we would be today. God bless your heart. God keep you. Stop talking about what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. Change your conversation and you can raise your expectations. Amen. God is still in the healing business. What is done for others, he wants to do for you. If you've heard this word today, if you believe the word that has been preached, if you want to give your life to God right in your home today, I was saved at home at mama's house. You don't have to be in a church building. If you heard this word today, and if you will but believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died for your sins, that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved right today. Let's pray this prayer together. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Save my soul today. I open the door of my heart. Come in, God. Set up domicile. I'm not asking you in for the weekend. But for the rest of my life, 
I will serve you. I'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you are due. Touch lives today, God. Men's spirits today. Heal broken homes today. Have your way in our life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless your hearts today. I pray that you've been blessed by this worship service. Songs that have been sung, word that has been preached. It's for you. It's to make tomorrow better. It's to increase your faith. Remember, if you can hear the word and you're not changed, it may be because you just bumped into Jesus. You really need to reach out and touch him. May this message guide, guard, and govern your life in the days that are to come. We love you. We're going to see you on Wednesday night. Now listen, I need for you to do something. Next Sunday, we're going to serve the Lord's Supper. I'm going to do it virtually here at church, but I need for you to have a wafer, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice, or some water so that as I do it here at church, you can join me wherever you are, right in your home, and we will observe the Lord's Supper together as is our custom on the first Sunday of the quarter. Until then, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. See you Wednesday night at seven o'clock in our Bible study. God loves you, and so do I. <laughs>